In the previous video, we were able to finish the zombie and the hero character classes, but the zombie isn't actually being spawned anywhere, right? If I play this file, I can move around all I want, but there's no enemies that show up. So let's start working on that. The first thing that we're going to want to do is to initialize this character. So if we go down to the bottom over here, you can see we've got the initialize section and we already created our hero, but we also need to add something for the zombie character. So we'll do zombie and we'll create a new instance of that from that class. Call it with the parentheses there. And then this is going to be something I'm going to use to display how many zombies are on, our, are on the screen and kind of keep track of your score. So we have zombie count. Obviously we initialized one, so we're going to set that to be one. Now we're going to have several zombie characters, so I'm going to put that in a group. I'm going to take zombies and uh, it's going to be a new variable. We're going to set it to pygame.sprite.group. And then we're going to add that zombie. So take zombies.add and pass in that zombie into this sprite group. And as you can see, we have this all sprites group, uh, which only has the hero right now, but we're going to have to pass the zombies to that so that we actually have access to all of the sprites. Okay, so now we've initialized everything, but we haven't actually passed the zombie group to our draw window function. So I'm going to go that, uh, I'm going to do that right here. Just add in zombies. So that's our group of zombie characters. And if we scroll up a little bit, we have a section here where we're going to work on drawing these zombies. So remember, it's a group, right? That's, uh, so that, I think that means it's an array of, I guess, objects or something like that. So we'll do for character in zombies. We want to do some logic here. So, uh, oh, and I forgot to pass it in here in this part of the function too. So we want to make sure we add zombies. Otherwise, it's not going to know what we're talking about. So we have for character in zombies, and we're going to display dot blit, draw it on our display that we have. Current, um, well, actually, we'll just do character and then set it to the character's rectangle. Now I'm going to add more to this in a little bit, but let's go ahead and go down to the bottom first and change one more thing and then we can try and test and see if this is working. So after we draw the window, we have a call to the, the move function for just the hero, but we want to do this for all of our sprites because they both have uh, a function called move. We can make a loop, uh, make this a lot easier for us. So I'm going to cut that out and inside here, what we're going to do is for character in all sprites, remember that's got all, um, we've got our hero, all the zombies and everything in there. We're just going to move each character. So character dot move. Now that should be enough to give it a test. So, oh, we have an error here. And it says that the, the first argument should be a Pygame surface, not zombie. So let's go back up there and see what's going on. Ah, so it looks like I, yeah, I passed the character, but we need to pass it a surface. So just to satisfy that for now, I'm going to, instead of use the character, I'll pass it the, a frame from the walk animation. So we'll just take the, the first one, for example, and let's see if that took care of that error. Okay, so there you go. Uh, I'm moving around and you can see our zombie character is bouncing around. Uh, he's not changing anything from the walk cycle, but at least you can see when he hits the edge, he uh, changes direction and he stays inside of the frame. So that is looking good so far. I'm going to go ahead and close this out and continue working over here. I think now would be a good time to go ahead and explain how the walk cycle is going to work. So instead of passing just the character in a single frame, I'm going to get rid of all of that. And we're going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it current zombie zomb sprite. And what is going to choose our sprite for us is a little bit of logic. So we say character dot walk animation. And here normally you pass a number to get one of the frames out of that array. But we want to choose a frame based on what our step count is. So if we pull up character dot step count this will give us our step count but remember i set it earlier to be um between 0 and 59 so once it hits 59 then it goes back to 0 and it just keeps cycling through that um we want we only have four images 
that we use for our character. So we need a way to give us 0, 1, 2, or 3. And the way that I had that done was to use floor division. So we take that number and then use two um, uh, forward slashes and 15. So what that does is it divides that number by 15 and just gives you the integer, not the, the remainder or the, the decimal left over. Um, and so what that means is between 0 and 60, if you divide it by 15 uh, without any remainder, we're going to be getting only 0, 1, 2, or 3. Okay, so that's all set up there, and now we have to actually use it. But before I use it, I do want to, um, <clears throat> well, I'll go, I'll go ahead and pass it in here, but I do want to set up um, something so that the character can flip around. You saw when he was bouncing on the screen, uh, if he hits the edge, he goes the other way, but he doesn't start facing that direction. So anyway, uh, current zomb sprite. And just like with the her hero character, we used a if statement. And so if the character's direction is negative one. So this is a little bit different from the hero because we used one and zero for right and left. Negative value here is going to be, um, I think, left. So take the current zombie character, the zomb sprite. And then we're going to use that same pygame dot transform dot flip. So we take that sprite, current zom sprite, and flip it on the x axis. So that means true for the first parameter here, and then false for the second one, because we don't want to flip them upside down. All right, so there we go. We have that all set up, and we have it passed inside here. So I think we can go ahead and test it out and see if he's going to move properly and walk. All right, so he's bouncing there, but it doesn't look like the walk cycle is working. Um, he is turning around though, so that's good. So let's take a look and see why this walk animation isn't working. I think everything down here is looking good to me, but let's go look and see if we're actually adding anything to the step count. So if we go back up to the zombie character and look at the, the move function, um, if he goes over 59, yes, we want it to be set to zero, but Okay, I think we did not add any logic inside of here to add to the step count. Fortunately, all we have to do is just add one more line of code at the bottom, which is self.stepCount plus equals one. Okay, so now let's try that again and see if it works. So the step count is working. This guy's a little bit faster. And you can see that his uh, walk cycle is actually cycling through and taking steps. I know it's pretty crude, but um, if you wanted to add more frames to his walk cycle, um, it would change up the math, and I just wanted to keep it kind of simple. So that's looking good for drawing one zombie on the screen, but we want to add more and increase difficulty for the player. And the way we're going to do that is with some user events. So scroll back down to the bottom here where it says user events, and we're going to create a new... Um, a new constant and we're going to call it spawn enemy and what that is going to be set to is pygame dot user event and then we're going to add one to it and that's just going to make sure that it's unique for this session and um, what we want to do is we raise this event um, or let me let me take a step back so these user events are just kind of custom um, I guess kind of like status reports for the game and uh, every time you raise it, you can tell the game to do something with that inside of this event loop. So remember, if we have event type set to quit and we click on the X, then it's going to run all of this code inside of here. But what we want to do is set up a, another clause where it says if event type is equal to spawn enemy, then we spawn an enemy inside of here. So uh, how can we get this to spawn every couple of seconds? Um, Pygame actually has a great little function for this. So we do pygame.time.setTimer. And this takes two parameters. First of all, it takes um, the event that you're trying to, uh, to run, and then a number in milliseconds for uh, an interval. So I'm going to set it to be 7,000, which means seven seconds. So every seven seconds, our program is going to raise this event and it's going to trigger whatever happens inside of here. And so what we want to do is create a new zombie. 
So I'll set a new variable, and this is going to be a new instance of a zombie character. And we have this zombie character, and we want to add this into our zombies group that we set up up here. So we'll do zombies.add, and then we'll say new zombie. And we also want to add him into our all sprites group. So that way when we run the, the move function down below, this little loop, uh, that zombie gets moved in conjunction with everybody else. So we'll do new zombie here. And then finally, we have another zombie and we want to keep track of what our score is. Uh, basically how many zombies are on the field at any given point in time. So we're going to add one to that. All right, so let's test this out and see if we are able to actually raise this event every, actually just for the sake of example, I'm going to change this to two. So we're not waiting for such a long time. So we run that again. And let's see, it starts off with one over there and then two seconds go by. There's another guy and then another two seconds. And you can see everybody's running on the screen and it's all looking like it's working out. And you can even see that some of the characters are a little bit slower. Some of them are a little bit faster. But one obvious thing that you're noticing is that uh, my character is invincible. We run into them and nothing is happening. So what we're going to do in the next video is start setting up some collision detection and set up a health bar so that we can actually uh, lose and then print out to the screen what the player's score is. So I'll see you in the next video.